I don't know, subjected to bushfire threats or something like that over time, it would be useful for you to be able to bring back a set like that. So one of the um, the goals that we've had is exploring ways of representing back to the user data from a number of different contexts. Here we go. This is me. So I'm going to bend this or move it because I'm short. Tell me if you can't hear me anymore. Okay, thanks. Um, so we have um, a number of co-authors that have been working with us on this pilot project. We've only been really started this project last year in earnest in around June and we have been developing a number of prototypes and I'm going to show you some screenshots of a couple of the prototypes and we will be launching the full version in four weeks. So there's a gratuitous link to register if you want to come to the webinar too. So it would be great if you did. Oh, that's exciting. I'm buzzed. Next slide. No, doesn't like it. There we go. Um, I've covered this, um, but we're also an increased capability as well. Next slide, please. Yeah. Um, so why build an Argo? Next slide, please. <laughs> um, Thankfully, Jeff's covered a lot of this, but there are about 6,000 um, life scientists who are really concentrating on genomics data in Australia. But um, as Jeff showed in the slide where it showed you where the genomics data are, they can be scattered across a number of different sources, around 900 on that website. Although most people just think to go to a big database like NCBI GenBank to get their data. Um, it means that when someone is trying to do a project, they don't necessarily know where all of the other sources of data are and can't find them quickly and easily. Um, it's important that people are looking at genomics data and people are doing it increasingly with the um, objective of helping people to create actual um, evidence-driven policy for things like environmental threats, like bushfires, for instance. Next slide, please. So um, as I mentioned, the, the main aim of our prototype is to allow people to explore particular the whole genomes and things like that, but, but within contexts, like not just taxonomy, but also ecology and maybe some phenotypic traits. Next slide, please. Um, so we started last year and we've released a prototype which has been out for testing and we're reiterating that ahead of a launch in a couple of weeks' time. And um, we'll get it out there in front of some people and see if it's actually doing its job in aggregating the data that they want to see. Next slide, please. So when we did that, we have, um, in our process when we've been building it, we've actually been out talking to a, a community in depth and we've um, had one-on-one -on -one consultations with around 98 members of the biosciences community to find out exactly what it is that they would like a service like Arga to be able to provide for them. And that just shows you um, that the majority of people that we spoke to work in the life sciences and are looking at biodiversity research. But we did consult with people across a number of sectors. Next slide, please. And so the purpose of, of having that extensive consultation phase was to make sure that the product that we end up building is actually something that people feel that they have ownership of and that they will want to engage with and will actually help them achieve their research, research objectives faster. What they told us um, was that the main problem that they have with the biggest player in the field, which is GenBank, is that they don't always trust that the data that they're obtaining has been identified correctly or there's some taxonomic uncertainty. And so what we wanted to do was um, give people some indicators that might assist them in being able to decide for themselves whether or not they want to interact with the data that they find. Um, the other thing was also just to... Um, give some pointers and, and expose a bit more metadata to them. Um, next slide, please. And so we um, did a more detailed analysis, which you don't need to read, but we ranked um, whether where we were going to get the other bits and pieces that we were going to incorporate with genomics data from and how hard that would be. Next slide, please. And so we decided that we were going to have to build a new model for to underpin the way that Argo was going to work. And it needed to be hierarchical in a number of ways. And one was that the data itself is hierarchical. And um, we also wanted to integrate data from a number of different sources. Um, I'll have the next slide, please. And so we were also trying to understand the space we were working in. So when I said that the data are hierarchical, this is what I mean. So um, if I move a bit, 
and we can see that people want to be looking at things that come from a number of different sources. You don't need to worry about any of the detail in there, but suffice it to say that genomics data is not just genomics data. It comes in a number of different shapes and sizes, and, and each one is um, important in its own right and is analysed differently. But that researchers want to, one, know it is there, and then two, how it relates to other pieces of data that fit within the puzzle. The important thing about it too is that it is all derived from one individual specimen. Any particular piece of data comes from one specimen and that specimen fits within the um, hierarchy that we're probably more familiar with, which is the Linnaean hierarchy. So we have a, um, a clash of these two different hierarchies that we need to try and represent within Naga. Next slide, please. And so what we decided to do was to go back to the material sample and have a look at the way that it changes across time and space as people are doing genomics data research. And um, we were just looking at material samples here because obviously there can be, um, the specimens can be in different shapes and formats. You might have human observations or photographs or things like that, but you can't get DNA from them. So we're only worried about things that are in collection, physical samples. And then we were um, mapping out the relationship as it changes over time. So is it subsampled? Is there a DNA extraction? And then, you know, what sorts of uh, data are derived from that? Next slide, please. And so um, we made a complicated map there that you don't need to worry about too much other than to show you that we've got a number of time points along our series. And we, so we've used the event model, the Darwin Core event model, to frame the um, database that underpins Arga. And we are modelling the collection event and then its accession into a museum collection or some other sort of formal data, um, specimen repository. And then the number of things that happen to it along its journey. And these are all one-to-many relationships. So you might end up having um, a subsample and then DNA may be extracted from that once or on multiple occasions. And then different actions are performed on each of the different types of um, derivatives that we've got from the one individual specimen. And hopefully it all links back the other way too. So you can end up getting a full provenance history for any particular specimen or, or piece of data that's in there. Next slide, please. Um, that just shows it a little bit closer up. So the point is that by the end of the scenario, we've got some data and then it relates to a number of different material samples. And we should, if we've got enough um, identifiers, be able to link them all back up together. So as, as the specimen goes along its journey, different things happen and we should be able to get metadata for that. Next slide, please. But the point and the difficulty and the hardest part about building Arga has been that those data or those bits of metadata don't all come from the one source. And so we have to, and of course, because they don't come from the same source, they're not in the same format. And so we've had to map and align each one of them. The other thing that's difficult too is that you might have a number of genomics resources but those resources or repositories even have their own bespoke um, structures within them. So they're not the same. So each one has to be mapped separately. Next slide, please. Uh, so, the main, so the main objectives in building Arga have been to resolve a bit of uncertainty and to just create more metadata for people to be able to make an assessment, discern between bits of data that they want to reuse. Next slide, please. And so we were solving a very complicated space there and we put out an app for testing. Next slide, please. And if you want, you can go and check it out. It's at uh, app.arga.org.au, but it is a prototype. And the new one is coming in a couple of weeks. Um, but I'll show you a few screen grabs from the prototype. Next slide, please. Next one. I make lots of slides and I don't leave them up for very long, but that's all right. Um, so the first one we're going to look at is just finding a, a thing. Next slide, please. And this one is the cane toad, Ranella marina. I come from Queensland, so um, there's a reason why I was looking for an invasive species. Next one, please. Um, so you type in Ranella and it comes back and it gives you a result. You can also search using vernacular names. We built that in as well. Next slide, please. And we've got a list there which provides some scientific classification which um, comes from a number of sources, mostly Australian Faunal Directory, which ALA relies on, but we've also respected um, what's in GBIF as well. Next slide, please. And then you go to a page. The new page is a bit different to this, but um, 
But essentially, we're getting a map of the distribution, um, some information about the taxonomy, and then a summary of how much data are available for that species. Next slide, please. And then you can then navigate around and look at any one in particular. So for the whole genome record, um, we provide all of the metadata that's available there, and people can link out and download the data if they wish. Next slide, please. Um, we've also got a specimens tab where people can go and interact then using the specimens to backtrack and say how many pieces of data are available for any individual specimen. So we felt it was important to go in both directions there from specimen up and species down. Next slide, please. Um, so in this example, we're going to then have a look at that specimen in context. Next slide, please. And um, here we're looking at all of the frogs and toads. So from the toad page, we could click on the frog icon and it took us to the Anura section. And we've presented some summary statistics, statistics at the top where we can see um, how many of any particular um, taxon of interest, in this case it's Anura, have got any genomic data or any other particular types of data. So we've separated out um, whole genomes as a special case in point and then other things are there as well. And then from there, you can browse all of the individuals within that, um, that order. Next slide, please. The other thing we're doing is allowing people to look in context so they can look in a geographic area and see what they can find. Next slide, please. And in this example, we brought back a list of all of the insects that are known to occur within the Fluoro Peninsula, for example, and we did a breakdown of those to see um, who had data and who didn't. Um, in this case, it's not whole genomes, it's just any genomic data. These are barcode markers. And we could see that um, beetles dominated in terms of the taxonomic diversity, but actually it was butterflies that dominated in terms of the data. So we can see um, which, which have got good coverage and which haven't. Next slide, please. Um, so essentially to summarise, um, we are currently reiterating that interface that I just showed you and we will be releasing it um, in a couple of weeks' time and if you'd like to register, you can um, go to that link and register for the webinar. We'd love to see you there. And um, next slide, please. And if you would like to get in touch with us to talk more about it and any needs or how we did it or anything like that, you can contact me or Kiva as well. She's the business analyst and she'd be really very much looking forward to talking to anyone about the project. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. I think we'll put off uh, t uh, questions till uh, the end. So uh, I'd like to invite Guy up to present on the Global Biodata Coalition. So thank you, Chuck. So while we're waiting for the slides, so I'm going to talk about the Global Biodata Coalition, which is a, an organization that concerns itself with the sustainability of biological data resources.